A young man lies on the floor of his bedroom. He lets out a long, satisfied exhale as his eyes roll back. A blackened spoon and a needle lay discarded next to him. As the heroin rushes through his veins, a wave of bliss washes over him. But then something goes wrong. This isn't a normal hit. He's about to become a statistic. One of the most worrying statistics in US modern history. Something we'll investigate in today's episode of the Infographic Show. What happens to your body during an overdose? Opioid overdoses are a major threat to American society, currently the leading cause of accidental death. It hasn't always been this way. From the 1950s to the 1990s, drug overdoses killed just a few thousand people every year. Then, around 2014, the overdose death graph started to rise dramatically. By 2019, nearly 50,000 out of the world's 125,000 opioid overdose deaths were in the USA, and that increased to almost 82,000 in 2022 with a similar number in 2023. The CDC put a silver lining around a jet black cloud in 2025 when it released its provisional data for drug deaths in the US from October 2023 to September 2024. The results were 87,000 overdoses from all drugs, which was down from about 114,000 from the year before. This is still a staggering number, and now we have a synthetic drug called fentanyl, a third and fourth wave powerful opioid that is dragging Americans toward a premature death. In the last few years, about 70 to 80 percent of drug deaths in the US involved fentanyl, whether by itself or mixed with heroin, cocaine, meth, or Xanax pills. And this is what happened to the guy in our intro. He'd taken heroin mixed with fentanyl. He survived, but he was left brain dead. Addicts almost always know immediately when they've taken something that is too powerful. When it happens, especially with fentanyl, they can be unconscious in a matter of seconds. Because this drug is highly fat-soluble, it crosses the blood-brain barrier much faster than heroin. It's anywhere from 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine, and morphine is already two to four times stronger than heroin. Just one or two milligrams of fentanyl, the size of a few sugar grains, can mean death. The initial blast, when the plunger is pushed or you smoke some in a pipe or on foil, comes from your opioid and dopamine receptors being flooded. This brings on the warmth and comfort addicts seek a short break from trauma and pain. But all of that calmness means the parts of the brain necessary for making the machine actually function start to slow down. In a very non-technical sense, your brain goes on vacation, and that means the neurons stop telling your lungs to breathe. Your brain can be starved of oxygen, a condition known as cerebral hypoxia. If it doesn't get the oxygen, then cells start to die. The cerebral cortex, your executive suite where your reasoning and problem-solving happens, starts switching off buttons until other parts of the brain shut down. After maybe four to six minutes, it's usually too late, even with medical attention. The brain can't function like it used to, meaning a permanent disability. After 10 minutes, it's almost certain that you'll be in a vegetative state. Even if you overdose and you don't reach that level, starving your brain of oxygen can still cause injury, sometimes a mild injury, what some experts are now calling the hidden brain injury epidemic. According to a study from 2010 to 2020, in the US, there were over 628,000 fatal and 9.4 million non-fatal overdoses on opioids, synthetic opioids, heroin, and stimulants. It's thought that about 46% to 92% of people who do use opioids illicitly have either experienced a non-fatal overdose or at least seen one in their lives. Some non-fatal ODs won't lead to an ER visit so they won't get recorded. What people don't realize is the survivors, especially if they've had more than one overdose, might be brain injured without even knowing it. The brain is a good healer, but if you keep taking away its oxygen, you might find yourself with attention deficits, learning and memory issues, processing speed problems, and executive function chaos. You might struggle to regulate emotions and control impulses. But during an actual overdose, the user won't feel any pain. They'll just drift off to sleep. As scary as an overdose sounds, when your brain shuts down, you won't know what's going on. You, meaning your consciousness, is simply gone. But what do overdoses actually feel like? A 20-year-old American woman overdosed and wrote about her experience on the educational drug website Arrowhead. She'd done other opioids, but had never tried Fent. She ordered a batch from the dark web, and soon she found herself sitting down with a small bag of crystals. As we mentioned earlier, around 1 to 2 milligrams can be fatal for someone with a major tolerance. This user snorted 6 milligrams. It was a mammoth hit for a fentanyl newbie. She woke up in a hospital with a syringe of saline in her right arm, in a nurse's gown, her hair smelling of vomit, and the absolute worst chest pain she's ever experienced. 
And that's it, she didn't even know what it felt like. She barely had any time to register the feeling before she effectively shut down. Her boyfriend later told her that she had snorted the powder, collapsed, and her lips turned blue. The blueness, or cyanosis, usually starts happening when your oxygen levels fall below 85%. She went from rapid absorption and instant relief to immediate and intense central nervous system depression. Her breathing quickly went from shallow to barely functioning because of very dangerous blood oxygen levels, and as you know, all of the major organs need oxygen to survive. Her heartbeat slowed as her brain starved, and she was probably very close to cardiac arrest. She might have had a mild heart attack, which is maybe why her chest was hurting, although she said it could have been from her boyfriend giving her CPR. She was extremely fortunate to come out of this alive, especially as it seems her boyfriend didn't have an opioid antagonist, what Americans know as Narcan. These drugs stop the opiates from working, so breathing comes back. Fentanyl overdose isn't always as blackout-inducing as that girl experienced. As we said, she took a monster hit. Another survivor on Arrowhead said his overdose was a much slower ordeal. He got his hands on a fentanyl patch, which of course he abused. He didn't stick it on his back, he chewed it a common method of abuse. What happened in his body was essentially the same as what happened to the girl, although the intensity was less and the shutdown was slower. He was out of it in Nodland feeling good when the lights suddenly started to dim. His friends noticed his breathing was shallow and he was sent to the ER. This is what he said about that. My entire body was paralyzed. I could not open my eyes or talk, but I was completely aware of what people were saying around me. The doctor said he was lucky to be alive and even luckier that he wasn't severely brain injured. He could have quite easily gone into a persistent vegetative state, or a PVS. But both of these people and many more on that site who OD'd had also taken a benzodiazepine. Now, benzos by themselves are not usually a dangerous kind of drug in terms of outright overdosing, but because they're another central nervous system depressant, you're making the chance of a total shutdown a lot more possible when you mix it with another depressant. Throw alcohol on that fire and you are definitely running the risk of your Facebook page being filled with thoughts and prayers. Tens of millions of Americans will take a benzo each year, usually the brand names of Xanax, Valium, Ativan, or Clonopin. Data based on usage from 2015 and 2016 said 25.3 million Americans took them as prescribed and 5.3 million misused them. That's almost like 10% of all Americans on these drugs possibly facing withdrawal absolute hell if they take them daily for more than a few weeks. But overdoses are rare when they're not mixed with opioids or alcohol or other drugs like heroin, oxy, and fentanyl. 2022 data from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health said 45% to 55% of U.S. drug users indulge in such combos. Around 50% of ER visits for drugs meet the criteria for what's known as polysubstance abuse. These days, that often means people doing opioids with their stimulants, like cocaine, methamphetamine, crack, or speed. There's been a huge increase in deaths with these drugs in the US, with the National Institute on Drug Abuse saying deadly stimulant overdoses went from around 12,100 in 2015 to 57,500 in 2022. But, and this makes all the difference, about 70% of those deaths in 2022 also involved fentanyl. This drug is finding its way into pretty much all illicit drugs sold in the US because it is so strong and relatively easy to manufacture. As you know, stimulants speed everything up. All the dopamine and norepinephrine in your brain overstimulates you. Your brain starts firing off signals like it's the 4th of July. You can go from being focused and alert to becoming erratic and paranoid because you're stuck in fight or flight mode. Your heart beats fast, your blood pressure spikes, you're breathing too hard, and if you keep hitting those white lines or pulling on that pipe, you are at risk of a seizure, stroke, heart attack, or aneurysm. So imagine this mixed with the very opposite, something that slows everything down. Users call this a push and pull effect. The best of both worlds, a sudden rush and then a relaxed state. The problem is the drugs might drag you down much lower than you wanted. On the other hand, if you've done meth and opioids because meth tends to last a long time, you could come down from the opioid and find that you've actually overdone it with the meth. The problem these days is Americans can end up doing a kind of speedball without even knowing it. Their meth or coke can contain fentanyl, and one line or hit on a pipe could mean oblivion. Worse, there are fentanyl analogs out there, some much stronger than fentanyl. There were reports in 2024 in the US that said minuscule traces of carfentanil was found in meth and coke. 
This drug, usually used to take down large animals, is 100 times more potent than fentanyl and 10,000 times more potent than morphine. But if you add just a microgram, one thousandth of a milligram, to any other drug, it can provide euphoria and relaxation. Get the dose wrong, and that opioid in your brain tells your lungs not to breathe. Cocaine users in Dayton, Ohio, found that out in 2016 when carfentanil in their coke and heroin turned into what the media called a mass casualty event. The precursors for these drugs can be ordered through sketchy companies, often working out of China. They send their chemicals over to a country like Mexico, or maybe next door to ethnic armies in Myanmar. And these people can easily cook up many kilograms. You don't need opium farms and you don't need to wait for harvests. You just mix up the chemicals in your regular kitchen. In 2019, fentanyl only made up about 32% of all opioid seizures in the US. In 2024, it was 94%. The reason is, just a kilo can make 500,000 to a million very strong doses, and enough precursors to make that kilo might only set you back about $5,000, when the guy selling it might make a million. That about sums up a major problem we are now facing. The drugs are getting stronger, cheaper, and easier to make, while the human body remains as vulnerable as ever. Have you or someone you know been affected by the opioid crisis? What do you think needs to change to prevent more lives from being lost? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now you need to watch Doctors Are Terrified of the New Zombie Drug, This Is Why, or have a look at insane drugs you didn't know existed.